TV News. Thanks, Shan, and I'm Randy Hansen. In today's World News Headlines, hundreds of Afghan students protest massacre of 16 civilians and surges fire on government delegation. And Obama says Afghan massacre made him more determined to bring troops home. An alleged Jewish shooter in Afghan massacre suffered traumatic brain injury. And six killed in U.S. drone strike in Pakistan. And lawyers prepare a lawsuit over alleged British role in drone attacks. And Israel-Palestinians agree to cease fire after 26 Palestinians killed in air strikes. And voters head to the polls for the Republican primaries in three states and the American Samoa. And Obama administration blocks Texas voter ID law. And UN will send human rights monitors to Syrian border countries. And former Penn Gov Pennsylvania Governor Rendell subpoenaed for ties to Iranian terrorist groups. UN rapporteur on torture decries U.S. treatment of Bradley Manning. And 96 more companies pull ads from Lush Lim Rush Limbaugh's program. And British police arrest Rebecca Brooks and five others in Murdoch phone hacking sweep. And NRC says fire at Nebraska nuclear plant posed serious safety risks. And the WTO says U.S. illegally subsidized airplane manufacturer Boeing and drinking water in California contaminated by nitrates. And World Water Forum opens as UN report predicts surging demand for water. And groups call for probe a journalist killed in Honduras after murder of radio host. GVTV News would like to say the views expressed on our news broadcast do not necessarily reflect the views of NCTV Digital Media Center. Unlike some news media, anyone can use any information on our news any way you want. And guess what? It's free. You do not have to subscribe to us or your daily news. But before these stories, GVTV News would like to thank one of our underwriters who supports your only visual video news media in Nevada County. That's right, it's us. GVTV News. In today's first world news story, hundreds of students in eastern Afghanistan protested against the United States condemning the U.S. soldier who reportedly massacred 16 Afghan civilians, mostly children. Some students burned an effigy of President Obama and called for U.S. troops to leave Afghanistan. And Jan Mohammed said, we, the students of Nagar Har Islamic University, want from crusaders to leave from Afghanistan immediately without any stipulations. Down, down America. Earlier, did Suspected insurgents fired on Afghan government delegation investigating the massacre of the 16 civilians. Two President Ahmed Karzai's brothers were with other senior officials when insurgents opened fire. And at the White House, President Obama has asked in an interview how the Afghan massacre impacts U.S. Plan plans in Afghanistan. And President Obama said, and so what we try to do is create a responsible pathway for an exit where by the end of 2014 we'll have our troops out. Porter asked, so this doesn't make you more inclined to move us out faster? And Obama replied, well, it makes me more determined to make sure that we're getting our troops home. It's time. It's been a decade. And frankly, we've gotten bin Laden and we've weakened Al Qaeda. We're a stronger position to transition than we would have been two or three years ago. More details are emerging from the alleged shooter, 38-year-old Army Staff Sergeant of the 3rd Striker Brigade Combat Team from Joint Base Lewis McCord in Washington State. He was trained as a sniper and served two, three tours in Iraq before arriving in Afghanistan late last year. 2010, he reportedly treated for traumatic brain injury suffered in a vehicle rollover in Iraq. Afghan lawmakers called on the soldiers to put on a trial inside Afghanistan. 
One, one person said it was a tragic incident for all of us and these people. The Western forces have repeatedly targeted civilians and killed Afghans in their operation. The Afghan parliament is very sad about this. We will follow this and will urge the president to, be, to put a criminals to trial. The United States has reportedly carried out another drone strike in Pakistan. Six people died and their vehicle was struck by a drone in South Warsistan. Pakistani officials said the passengers were all militants. And human rights lawyers are preparing to sue British Foreign Secretary William Hague over the alleged use of British intelligence in assisting U.S. drone attacks in Pakistan. Cases being brought on behalf of Noor Khan, whose father was killed by, in a U.S. airstrike. Yeah, in a U.S. strike. Lawyers say British intelligence officers who provided information used in drone strikes may be liable for secondary parties to murder. And Israeli and Palestinian factions in the Gaza Strip have reportedly agreed to a ceasefire after four days of cross-border violence earlier yesterday. An Egyptian official said both sides have pledged to end current attacks and implement a comprehensive and mutual calm. Israel's latest strikes in Gaza has killed at least 26 Palestinians, including five civilians. At least 80 Palestinians were also wounded, most of them civilians. At least four Israelis in border towns were wounded in rockets fired by Palestinian militants in Gaza. And voters in Alabama, Mississippi, Hawaii, and American Samoa headed to the polls today, or well, it'll be yesterday, by the time you hear this, to vote in the Republican primaries and caucuses. Polls indicated there could be a virtual three-way tie in Alabama and Mississippi between Mitt Romney, Rick Santorum, and Newt Gingrich. In election news, the Justice Department's Civil Rights Division has blocked Texas from enforcing a new law requiring voters to present photo identification after ruling that the law would discriminate against Latino voters. I guess they don't have pictures. The move follows a similar decision late last year to block another voter ID law in South Carolina. Meanwhile, in Wisconsin, judges declared a state law requiring people to show photo IDs at the polls will be unconstitutional. I guess it's against the law to have an ID. I, I don't know. United Nations has announced it will soon deploy human rights monitors in countries bordering Syria to collect eyewitness testimony on atrocities committed in the country. The news comes as day after a special UN Security Council meeting in the Arab Spring showed the five permanent members are no closer to breaking their impasse over Syria. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton urged the international community to speak with one voice on Syria. And she said, now the United States believes firmly in the sovereignty and territorial integrity of all members of states. But we do not believe the sovereignty demands that this council stand silent when governments massacre their own people, threatening regional peace and security in the process. We reject any equivalence between premeditated murders by government military machine and actions of civilians under siege driven to self-defense. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov says Syrian authorities bear a huge share of the responsibility, but he insisted opposition fighters and militants are also committing violent acts. He said making hasty demands on regime change, imposing unilateral sanctions designed to trigger economic difficulties and social tensions in countries, inducing the opposition to continuous confrontation to the authorities instead of promoting dialogue, making calls in support of armed confrontation and even foreign military intervention, all of the above are risky recipes of geopolitical engineering that can only result in the spread of the conflict. Well, that's what he said. Former Pennsylvania Governor Ren Edward Rendell has been subpoenaed by the U.S. Treasury Department over his ties to an Iranian opposition group, Majadine Kalk, or the MEK. Although the group has been designated as a terrorist organization by the State Department for 15 years, a number of prominent former U.S. officials have been paid to speak in support of MEK. Lists of officials include two former CIA directors, James Woosley and Porter Goss, former FBI director Louis Free, and Attorney General Michael McCossey, former Homeland Security Secretary Tom Ridge, and former New York City Mayor Rudolph Galliano, Galliani, or whatever his name was, and Howard Dean. Oh, a bunch of guys. UN Special Rapporteur on Torture has accused the U.S. military of cruel, inhuman, degrading treatment towards alleged Army whistleblower Bradley Manning. In his report, Juan Mendez criticized the U.S. military for holding Manning in solitary confinement for 11 months. Mendez writes the Special Rapporteur and concludes that imposing seriously punitive conditions of detention on someone who has not been found guilty of any crime is a violation of his right to physical and psychological integrity, as well as his presumption of innocence. Manning is accused of leaking a trove of secret documents to the whistleblowing website WikiLeaks. In media news, advertisers are continuing to pull ads from Rush Limbaugh's radio talk show. Think Progress has obtained an internal memo from the distributor 
premier networks, which shows 96 companies have requested their ads not be played during Ron Bob's show. The memo also lists other programs deemed to be offensive, including anchored by right-wing host Glenn Beck and Sean Hannity. Of course, all the right-wing guys. Link Progress, Progress says that 96 national companies do not include 50 companies that have previously pulled their ads from Limbaugh's program following his use of terms slut and prostitute to describe the Georgetown University law student who had advocated for coverage of birth control. In addition, RadioInfo.com is reporting the syndicator of Limbaugh's program is suspending a major portion of advertising spots in the show in the next two weeks. But it's also leaking out that most of his places have been filled again with new ad people. British, um, well, let's see, oh, the British um, uh, former News International Chief Executive Rebecca Brooks and her husband Charlie Brooks are reportedly among those arrested for the uh, Rupert Murdoch deal out of Britain. So we'll keep you posted on this one. A new report by Nuclear Regulatory Commission has revealed an electrical fire at an idled Nebraska nuclear power plant posed a high safety risk because the fire knocked out pumps circulating water in a pool that spent nuclear fuel. The fire occurred last June at Fort Calhoun Nuclear Station shortly after the reactors were idled during a mass flooding. The NRC said it classified the fire as a red event. It represented the highest level of safety threat tracked by the agency. The report also criticized workers at the nuclear plant for ignoring the acrid order in the plant that existed for three days before the fire began. And World Trade Organization, or the WTO, has ruled the United States has been illegally subsidizing an airplane manufacturer, Boeing, causing serious prejudice to its European rivals, Airbus. Carol de Gouche is trade commissioner for the European Union, said not only has the WTO rejected the appeal by the United States, but it has also gone for even further. WTO has found that the U.S. is guilty of past illegal funding of, to Boeing worth between five and six billion dollars and future illegal subsidies just over three billion of U.S. dollars. Well, that's about four dollars, isn't it? New study has found drinking water in California's agriculture core is contaminated by nitrates and that the problem is likely to worsen in the coming years. Researchers at the University of California, Davis, found chemical fertilizer and livestock manure at the main source of groundwater contamination, affecting more than one million people across the state's Salinas Valley and parts of Central Valley. Nitrates are linked to the range of health problems, including reproductive disorders and cancer, and high levels of nitrates in water can prove deadly to infants. Glad we live up in the hills. We just get mercury. The study on contaminated drinking water in California's agricultural core comes on the heels of the United Nations report that found the global uh, agricultural sector will need 19% more water by 2050 to meet the 70% increase in demand for food. Meanwhile, government officials, industry representatives, and members of the nonprofit groups are meeting in Marseille's, Marseille, well, whatever it is, France, in water, World Water Forum to discuss global water policy. Angel Garia said, today 800 to 900 million people are in the areas that you have where you have water stress. Water stress we define as, as difficult access to water. And then on top of that, the fact that you get water, it may not be right quality, bad quality water, also extremely, extremely dangerous because by having good water and investing one euro in good water, you will save six euros in, or eight euros in health cost. Group Reporters Without Borders is calling for an international investigation into attacks on journalists in Honduras following the murder of the radio host Fausto Hernandez Artiga, who was killed Sunday by machete blows, bringing the number of slain media workers in the country to 19 over the past two years. And that's it for World News Today. Now another text to one of our underwriters who supports your only visual video news media in the Vatican. That's right, it's us. TV, TV News. Soundcheck Music Center, the rock and roll connection. We have guitars, amps, drum equipment, sound accessories, lessons, and repairs. We are located at 671 Maltman Drive, Grass Valley. 530-272-7236, open seven days a week. Of 
that's right. It's time for the police blotter and pictures in the blotter. Not from these actual events, but used for visual aid only, Samuel. Grass Valley Police Department on Sunday, 10.13 a.m. A caller from 100 block of Neal Street reported a fox in a residence who was gone when officers arrived. 1.29 p.m., a caller from 600 block of South Auburn Street reported a man keeps walking his dog into the caller's property to relieve himself. Or itself. 3.37 p.m., a caller from Ridge and Banner View Roads reported kids on scooters were pulling in front of vehicles and causing a hazard. And 4.07 p.m., a caller from 100 block of West McKnight Way reported a physical fight. It was a mutual combat, but a man was arrested on suspicion of possessing drug paraphernalia and stolen property. 5.25 p.m., a caller from East Main Street reported an extremely drunken man stumbling in the road. He could not be located. At 6.05 p.m., a caller from 600 block of Freeman Lane reported a woman tried to shoplift, but the items were returned. At 9.50 p.m., a caller reported three men were trying to shoplift from business in 1300 block of East Main Street. No charges were desired. They were advised not to return. And Monday, 2.31 a.m., a caller from 200 block of Sierra College Drive reported theft of a laptop. At Nevada County Sheriff's Office on Sunday, at 8.12 a.m., a caller from Dog Bar Road and Lodestar Drive reported a man in the road walking a bike and pulling a golf caddy cart. I'd call 911 too, wouldn't you? 9.55 a.m., a caller from 11,000 block of Highway 20 reported an ongoing trespassing issue. In 11.25 a.m., a caller from Cherokee Street reported a neighbor was allowing a four-year-old to shoot a BB gun at birds. They were scaring away rodents. 12.25 p.m., a man from 21,000 block of John Bourne Road reported being assaulted by residents. And 1.17 p.m., a caller from Inverness Way reported possible attempt to remove screens around a house. And a woman at 3.15 p.m., a woman from Aspen Gold Drive sought treatment at the hospital for an assault by her son, but she did not want to file a report. And 3.47 p.m., a caller from 20,000 block of McCourtney Road reported possible identity theft. And 5.10 p.m., a woman from Rachel Lane reported her husband shoved her, and she was on, has an ongoing domestic violence situation. And 5.33 p.m., a caller from Retrack Way reported promiscuous shooting. And 5.46 p.m., a caller from 14,000 block of LaBar Meadow Road reported a woman was refusing to give him his vehicle. Situation was mediated. And Monday, 1.19 a.m., a caller from 12,000 block of McCourtney Road reported a residential burglary in Nevada City Police Department on Sunday, 11.05 a.m. A caller from Seven Hills School reported quads being ridden on the field. It was Little League coaches prepping the field. And 1.17 p.m., a woman from 800 block of Zion Street reported her husband grabbed and pushed her. And 5.10 p.m., a man from Commercial Street reported a man threw hot tea on his face and another man threw a pine cone at him. And 9.13 p.m., a caller from Coyote Street reported a dead dog sitting on top of a van which could not be located. And 9.38 p.m., a caller from 500 Block of Cyril's Avenue reported a person tried to open the front door of a business, then ran away. And that's it for the blotter today. Now another thanks to one of our underwriters who supports you guessed it, your only visual video news media in Nevada County. That's right, it's us, GV TV News. Christopher's Old World Deli and Catering Company has brought its delicious food and service downtown Grass Valley. Like desserts? They got them. You like international style lunches? They got them. Christopher's Deli and catering for parties, get-togethers, weddings, or whatever. Open seven days a week. In today's local news headlines, evidentiary hearing postponed in home evasion case and storms expected all week. And KNCO will continue to air Limbaugh. In a story written by Liz Keller of the Union, preliminary hearing of evidence against three suspected home invasion robbers originally set for Thursday has been postponed for a week. Home invasion occurred in Big Oak Valley on February 27th when four masked gunmen allegedly forced entered a residence while the occupants were sleeping, threatened to shoot them, then bound them with duct tape. Suspects allegedly stole 20 to 30 pounds of 
medical marijuana, a rifle, a shotgun, a semi-automatic handgun, as well as electronics before fleeing. Brian David Estrada, 35, pleaded not guilty to possession of stolen property and currently out on custody on a $50,000 bail. His attorney, Greg Klein, told Nevada County Superior Court Judge Jane York he was not available for preliminary hearing and that already had been set for Thursday. York found good cause to continue the hearing. A decision initially was disputed by the attorney for the co-defendant, Willard Ernst, 26, who has pleaded not guilty to first-degree burglary and possession of stolen property. Ernst attorney David Alkire withdrew his objection and the hearing was reset for March 22nd. Ernst's bail previously had been reduced to 35000 but Alkire asked for a further reduction in court Monday. He told New York that Ernst has no prior felonies and has been cooperative. Assistant District Attorney Anna Ferguson noted that Ernst had allegedly been in possession of one of the stolen weapons and added the additional charges might be forthcoming. York did lower his bail to 25000 Third co-defendant Michael Joseph Cameron, 31, suspected previously had pleaded not guilty to robbery, criminal conspiracy, possession of stolen property, carrying a concealed firearm in a vehicle, and committing a felony while on bail. He also faces charges of possessing controlled substance, possession for sale, transportation for sale, as well as driving on a suspended license, stemming from a January arrest. The fourth suspect has not yet been identified. And this week's forecast for Grass Valley... Well, 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 I think it's rain, high near 51, breezy with south southwestern winds between 20 and 28 miles per hour with gusts of up to 39 miles per hour, chance of precipitation 100%, new rainfall amount between half and three quarters of an inch possible. And, well, well let's see, tonight, well, I'm not going to read this because this was last night and it already happened, but guess what? I bet it was rain. And Wednesday, showers near f high 54 south southwest winds between 11 to 15 miles per hour, gusts high as 21 miles per hour, chance of precipitation 100%. New rainfall amount between three quarters and one inch possible. And Wednesday night, showers low around 45 south wind 9 to 13 miles per hour, chance of precipitation 90%. Oh, good, it's going down. New rainfall amounts between a half and three quarters of an inch possible. Thursday showers high near 57 south wind 11 miles per hour chance of precipitation 90 percent. Thursday night showers low at 43 chance of precipitation 90 percent. And Friday showers high 53 chance of precipitation 90 percent. And Friday night you guessed it showers and low around 34. In a story by Matthew Renda of the Union KNCO talk ho talk radio news talk radio and Rush Limbaugh will continue their mutual beneficial if sometimes stormy relationship despite local pressure for radio station to drop the nationally syndicated show. We're going to keep Rush, station manager Tom Fitzsimmons said Monday. There have been some sponsors that have expressed concern about their ads being affiliated with the show, but we can schedule around the programming. Pressure to drop the three-hour show, which airs weekdays from 9 a.m. to noon on KNCO, began to mount the wake of comments Limbaugh made about Sandra Fluke a 30-year-old college student who testified in front of Demo De Democratic members of Congress regarding insurance coverage for female contraception. Limbaugh was widely castigated for comments that included him labeling Fluke a slut and a prostitute and demanding she publish sex videos of her demanding she publish sex videos of herself. Many national advertising sponsors began to flee. Locally, KNCO began receiving phone calls and emails demanding Limbaugh be removed from the airwaves, Fitzsimmons added. County residents Aaron Minnett started an online petition entitled Take Rush Limbaugh Off KNCO in Nevada County, which had garnered 1,300 signatures by Monday. I think it's a terrible message that our community would support this type of banter, Minnett said. It amounts to attack on women. Fitzsimmons said he appreciated the viewpoint of those who wanted Limbaugh removed, but he said he received many phone calls from people who wanted to continue listening to the program as well. We received 600 to 700 emails, Fitzsimmons said. I have reams of paper full of responses. After first, At first, most of the feedback came back to those who sought Limbaugh's removal, Fitzsimmons said. But after KNCL revealed it considered such a measure, the station was flooded with calls demanding Limbaugh be kept on the air. The union also inundated with emails and phone calls from individuals weighing in both sides of the issue. Be a big mistake to take the show off the air, said Lewis Robinson of Grass Valley. Yes, he makes a um, made a mistake and yes he apologized that should be the end of it i think the union also had a uh, it was about a 50 50 split 
County resident Jack Pascoe also contributed his opinion, cancel the radio show permanently, he said in an email to the union, crass commercialism cannot outweigh such an unacceptable conduct. GBTV News agrees with Tom Fitzsimmons' decision the rush remains on the air. Censorship of our airways is a very slippery slope and not something we should consider. Yes, Rush had a bad example for his point of the agenda behind Sandra Fluke's testimony, and his penalty was many of his advertisers withdrew their support to send a message, and that's the way to do it. Even though they, he got filled up with new advertisers right after the old ones left. That's it for local news today. Now we'd like to thank the Union, Associated Press, Amy Goodman, Reuters, and others for the source of our news, and you for watching. And you can watch this broadcast on Comcast Cable, NCTV Channel 11 in Nevada County, 8 a.m., 3 p.m., 7.30 p.m., Monday through Friday, Sudden Link 16 in Truckee and Alta Sierra. We also are streamed in the Internet at NCTV's Digital Media Center website, NevadaCountyTV.org, and GVTV.org. And don't forget Grass Valley Television that plays 24-7 on the net at grassvalleytelevision.com. We post to Facebook, YouTube, Blip.tv, and many other sites and have RSS feed and video podcast on iTunes. Just search under Video Podcast for GV TV News. Content is controlled by the producer of this newscast, me, and Grass Valley Television. It's not necessarily the opinion of NCTV Digital Media Center, or me, or Grass Valley Television. Grass Valley Television also videotapes local events around Nevada County, and for information, grassvalleytelevision at gmail.com or 362-8889. This show is produced by Grass Valley Television and Rural Counties Television Network and talk to you tomorrow. should be Wednesday. Thursday, sorry. 